Feed Me Seymour. It's maybe the best off-Broadway show of all time. We're talking about Little Shop of Horrors. And right now, Tony Award winner Lena Hall is playing Audrey. Here's Charlie Cooper with more. Thanks, Tamsin. Lena Hall has arrived on Skid Row. I spoke with her here at Citizen M Hotel. So, Lena, thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're taking on this role of Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors off Broadway. It's a story that everyone is familiar with, but what was it about Audrey and her role that kind of spoke to you? The show, I've known it since I was a kid. I watched it, I watched the movie, and that was the only version that I actually knew going into this. So when Michael Mayer was like, hey, would you ever want to play Audrey in Little Shop? I was like, oh yeah. Based solely on the movie and the soundtrack that I knew, which was the movie soundtrack. And so when I came into the show, I had Ellen Green's version in my head so very strongly. And, and then um, my first day of rehearsal, I saw the show that night for the first time. And I thought, oh, oh okay. So there's so many different ways to play this character. She's really, really layered. She's not a ditz. She's very much vulnerable and uh, she's kind of strong from having, you know, grown up in, in Skid Row. And so just from that alone, it was I was really excited, but I had already taken <laughs> the job. I wanted to come back to the New York stage. I've been gone for a while and it wasn't something that was necessarily a choice. It was because I was filming Snowpiercer's TV show and it always overlapped during like the high times of uh, musical theater when the seasons are. But then of course the pandemic and all of that just kind of disrupted everything. So for me, getting back on stage and then also getting to play this iconic role, a lot of people were like, oh, this is such a different role for her. And I was like, I don't know, actually now looking it on the page, knowing the role better, it's in my wheelhouse because it's really just a damaged person who has hopes and dreams and holds on to those even though, even though they're pretty unattainable. Bringing in my edginess to it was, um, a lot less important. So even singing the score, like I'll dirty it up a little bit here and there, but really the songs are so beautifully written. What Alan Menken and Howard Ashman wrote are on the page are so important for the show itself that I had to, I have to stop myself from wanting to like, you know, do the Lena Hall thing with it or whatever. If I am going to do that, it has to be truthful to the storytelling. Like the three, the three girls, the urchins, they can go off more because that's more on brand for them. But for this character, it's a little, it's much more restrained. You get the moment to shine, but it's not quite, I think, what people might be thinking of, like the end of Hedwig, where I was allowed carte blanche to do whatever I wanted. And it became insane at the end. Like I was, I was holding notes forever and I was doing these crazy riffs and crazy high notes and whatever, but that was appropriate for that character at that moment to do for the show. It worked. This is so much different, you know? Was there anything that you did to prepare to kind of get back into the groove of um, being on stage? Uh, <laughs> nothing prepares you to get back into the groove of an eight show week. My body hurts a lot. Uh, and when I sleep, I have nightmares. The prep is all in the, is in the character work. There's quite literally nothing you can do to prepare you for eight shows a week that's not doing eight shows a week. <laughs> so when you start doing eight shows a week, then you get that stamina back. My self-esteem is a little low when it comes to like doing eight shows a week again. But as it's progressing now, I'm becoming like, oh yeah, I got this. Mm -hmm. I always say, and don't be afraid to sound like <laughs> Don't be afraid to sound like because you can get over that. If yeah. you're not afraid, then it's not gonna ruin the rest of the song in your head. You're not gonna go, oh, I cracked, oh my God. Uh, and then you get tight. If you just, you're like, oh, I cracked, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just gonna keep saying it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, that's what makes something so exciting is to hear, you know, when a, when a singer is like, not perfect. Mm -hmm. Then it's so human. Right. And it makes it so good. Right? There's that relatability aspect for Ex sure. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and I love that. And so when I'm able to kind of do that for myself and I'm like, I'm not afraid to crack, mm -hmm. like it's fine. That's when that power comes in. Mm -hmm. You have the power to like really just give it all. Was there a specific song? Was there a specific moment? Is there a specific moment in the show that just is the thing for you? Is it a spoiler alert? <laughs> um, well, I hope it's not. Cause when I get eaten by the plant, <laughs> Yeah. It is literally, yeah. they should sell tickets 
to be eaten by the plant because it is so much fun. It's like a little ride that you go on when you get eaten by the plant. <laughs> Not, I mean, I get to die. I mean, this is the first time I've gotten to do a death scene, which is just so much fun. Honestly, it is so much fun to die on stage every night. Someone grabs your ankles and like pulls you through the plant and it's like, it's like a ride. You're like, ah! <laughs> down on you. Honestly, gotta sell tickets. We're talking a lot about music. I know you recently dropped an album. I did. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's called 1001 mm -hmm. and it has to do with Snowpiercer. 1001 Cars Long and uh, it's basically all the songs I sang on the show mm -hmm. plus a couple that I wish I had sung. <laughs> I wanted to do covers of because I was like, oh that song is so cool. <laughs> and they're very like elevated moments for my character on the TV show. Give me a reason to love you Give me a reason to breathe It was fun because the songs were picked for me, essentially. And I liked that because it forced me out of my little box. And I love it when someone expands my music taste. Like when I get in an Uber and they're like, do you yes. want to listen to music? And I go, why don't you put on your favorite music? Because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I've never heard it and I love to listen to it. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, it'll be something completely out of what I listen to and I'll, I'll love it.